too boring Need some organic spice Oh, oh I am desperately seeking sparkles Show me, please Here we have two shapes and they look very similar But maybe you notice they are not the same the red shape is called a squircle and the blue shape is a round cornered rectangle. Let me move the squircle over the rectangle and zoom in so we can see the difference. As you notice, there is a tiny difference. The squircle looks much more organic and is very close to the shape used on iOS icons. So how do we create them? We start off by creating a circle. Once we have our circle, Right-click on it and choose Convert to Curves. Make sure the Node tool is selected and from the toolbar enable all the snapping options. To create the circle, we need to adjust all the control points of the nodes. Let's move the first left control point until it touches the left outer border of the object. Because we turned on snapping, this is a piece of cake. Let's do the same for the right node. After we repeat the same steps for the remaining three nodes, we get our circle. Pretty awesome. Suppose that we wanted a more rounded circle. An easy way of achieving that is by adding a rectangle and then making it slightly smaller than our current circle. This rectangle will be the area where the circle will fit into. When we select our circle with the node tool, we can now adjust the control points to snap to the rectangle border instead of the outer border of itself. If we repeat this for all the nodes, we get our more rounded circle. Pretty cool. Let's revert back to the more rectangular circle and paste the iOS icon vector. As mentioned earlier in the video, our circle is very close to an iOS icon. The iOS vector is actually a smooth cornered rectangle. And if we zoom in and compare, we can see the differences. To get a more closer shape to the iOS icon, I'm going to start over with a new rectangle and give it a round corner of 23%. This is pretty close to the iOS vector. And as you can see, we need a bit more curvature. Let's convert our rectangle to a curve. I'm then going to add guidelines to the two nodes of the left top corner. This will allow me to add a square box for that area. Next, I will multiply the width and the height with 1.3. Let's duplicate this box to the opposite corner and move our guidelines so that we have guides on all the corners. The final step is to adjust the nodes. First, we will move the control points to the outer border just like we did with the circle, and then move the node itself to the closest guideline we created earlier. If we repeat the same steps for all the nodes, we get our icon vector. When I change the blend mode to erase, we can quickly see the difference and it will not be the same as the iOS icon, but it will be smoother compared to the rounded rectangle we started with. I'll quickly add that on top and notice indeed that the curve is smoother and closer to the iOS icon. By the way, here is the squircle version on top we created earlier. Let's change the blend mode to erase and compare it with our smooth cornered rectangle. The squircle is much rounder compared to the smooth rectangle we created. If you're interested in how exactly the iOS icon is created, I'll put a couple of links in the description. Thanks again for tuning in. Hit the like and subscribe buttons if you like this video. Until the next video.